welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about playing with our cats. It sounds like something really simple, and it is simple, but there are some things that you can do to ensure that you are giving your cats the best playtime ever. Interacting with your cat during play is beneficial for many reasons. When you actually play with your cat and interact during play, your cat builds a really trusting bond and relationship with you. You can also use play to help two cats get along better with each other. Play is great for exercise, play can help with stress relief in your cat, and play also has emotional and physical health benefits. Cats are really motivated by their natural instincts to hunt. When cats hunt, they stalk, they catch, they kill, and they eat. This is an important sequence that cats need to act out in order to release energy. When they don't get the opportunity to act out this sequence, which they can act out during play, behaviors that we don't want our cats to do can occur, behaviors that are really undesirable in our household start to occur and our cats may also have physical health issues occurring because they're not able to act out these natural instincts. Some things like scratching on the furniture, knocking things off the shelves, using the litter box inappropriately, these are all types of behaviors that can be prevented by letting our cats act out these natural instincts of hunting. When you interact with your cat, that means you're actually playing with your cat. You're not focusing on something else while your cat is playing or you're not putting out toys or puzzles or games for your cat to do on their own. You are actually interacting in the play with your cat. You are engaging in the play. I found the best toy to do this is a wand toy, which is a stick with string and something on the other end. This keeps your hand away from your cat's claws and teeth and it also gives you the ability to move the toy in a way that your cat will react to the best. The goal is for you to move the toy in a way that the toy looks and acts like prey. Prey for a cat is a mouse, a bird, a lizard, things that scurry things that are small, things that move quick. You want to allow your cat to act like a hunter. It's important to pick the right toy and toy preferences can vary between cats. Cats have different personalities and some cats like other toys more than other cats. Every cat is different. This means that you might have to purchase a few different toys or make your own toys that are different. Have a variety and experiment. See what your cat responds to. Your cat may also get bored of a certain type of toy and want to switch it up and use a different one. Cat preferences also change as they age. So for different stages in your cat's life, the way they play and the toys that they interact with will change. So when I say different types of toys, I'm talking about the wand toy, but each wand toy, the toy that's at the end of the string that your cat is interacting with, that toy is different. Wand toys are great because you can have the toy on the end wiggle, you can have them slide and scurry, you can have them fly and dart. You can move this toy in a lot of different ways for your cat. Some cats really enjoy toys that make kind of a rustling sound or squeak or a scratching sound. So that's how you can provide variety and different types of toys. Look at the toy on the end of the wand. Sometimes there are feathers, sometimes there's kind of a cardboard or rustling material. Sometimes the toys are solid, sometimes they're soft, sometimes they're fluffy. See what you, your cat enjoys. Some cats that are more timid or cats that are elderly, they often like toys that are larger or easier to grab. A very confident or a very athletic cat, a young cat, may choose a toy that is smaller or a little more challenging. And it's also how you interact with the toy, how you move the toy. You can make it more challenging or easier for your cat. Some cats prefer toys that fly through the air as if they were birds or take large jumps like a grasshopper. 
Some cats prefer toys that wiggle on the ground like a snake or scurry like a mouse. Sometimes they like their toy to hide and disappear, so hide behind the couch leg or underneath a chair and around the corner. They like to not be able to see the toy, have it out of their vision for a second and then come back in their vision and then dart out again. Think about how a mouse may move. Some cats like toys that they can hold in their mouth. Some like toys that they can bat with their paw. Some toys that bounce. Some toys that they can chew. Some toys that are light and feathery or some toys that are fluffy and furry. So once you've found your cat's preference and they may have more than one toy that they like to engage with, once you have discovered that, it is important to keep a consistent and schedule a routine to play with your cat. So what time of the day is best for you to play with your cat? Keep a regular schedule for this type of interactive play. It's best to even do this twice a day, so maybe once in the morning and once in the evening. And the time can range from only 5 minutes up to 15 minutes, depending on the energy and ability of your cat. It's often a really great time to play with your cat when they are naturally more playful and active. So this is usually before feeding time whenever you choose to feed your cat and usually before bedtime or at dawn or dusk. How you move the toy is really important. You want to think of how a cat would normally hunt in the wild. Cats like to stalk their prey. Prey moves slowly and doesn't come directly to your cat's face. It kind of moves away from your cat. A mouse won't run straight up to a cat. A mouse will run and scurry by trying to stay hidden. That will really entice your cat and get your cat interested in engaging in play with this toy and with you. You want to think like a snake, a bird, or a mouse. How do those animals move? And try and move your toy in the same way. They run at different speeds. They change direction. They're kind of erratic. They scurry under things. They hide behind curtains. These kind of animals like to play dead and then suddenly jump up and run away. Move the toy like these animals, like prey. Alternate between moving fast and slow. Give your cat time to pause and kind of think of their next move. Let your cat be strategic. Don't make it too hard for your cat and don't make it too easy as well. Movements that move away from your cat's visual field will trigger their prey drive. So you don't want to dangle the toy in front of your cat's face to get their attention. Prey wouldn't do that. Our cat's hunting skills are just as mental as they are physical. So this can really tire your cat out. And play is often fairly short, which is why you can do it multiple times per day. Interactive playtime is really great to build up your cat's confidence and the trust and the bond and the relationship that you have between your cat. You can really build up your cat's confidence by letting your cat be proud of catching the toy. Don't let it be too easy, but also let your cat have fun. Let your cat catch the toy and kill the toy, grab onto the toy, hold on to the toy. Don't pull it away too fast. Let your cat feel that they have caught their prey and then let them play with it for a bit on their own. And then pick up the toy again and start moving the toy. Throughout play, let your cat capture and hold on to the toy multiple times. This really builds up their confidence. When it's time to end the game, when you notice your cat not as interested or it's time for you to stop, your cat's getting tired, you're getting tired, again, this probably will only be around 10 minutes. You don't want to suddenly just stop out of nowhere, drop the toy or put the toy away. You want to slowly wind down the play and you'll get used to how long your cat typically enjoys to play so you'll over time start to know when to start to wind down the play. Think of it similar as a cool down to when you're exercising or working out. Let the prey, the toy, slowly get tired and start moving slower. You can pretend that your toy is injured and they can't move as quickly as they could in the beginning. Your cat will also start to slow down when the toy slows down, when you slow down. 
then le let your cat have one final capture and you can give your cat a treat or feed them dinner to kind of symbolize the end of play. And this also works well with mimicking an actual hunt. At the end of a hunt, your cat, after they're playing with their food, they will eat their food. So a treat can be a great way to symbolize the end of play. Then put the toy away. Use this wand toy as something special that you only use between you and your cat. Your cat can't play with this toy on their own. It's something that is a bonding activity for the two of you. So in between games, store the toys that you use to play with your cat in a place where your cat can't see them or reach them. And leave toys like plush mice or balls around with, that your cat can play with on their own by themselves. Solo play is also important and fun for cats to have. So I hope this video was helpful and you were able to incorporate regular play and interactive play with your cat to really bring your relationship and your bond to the next level and you are really able to provide your cat with some fun playtime. And of course it's a lot of fun for us as well because our cats they're so adorable when they're playing and they really can make you laugh and it's just an enjoyable time for everyone. Over time, the more you play with your cat, you will learn what your cat likes and the two of you will play together in better ways each time. Your cat will also be more excited and willing to play with you the more that you do it. At first, your cat might be a little standoffish or not really sure, but if you consistently move the toy as if it was prey, your cat will definitely be interested. Even cats that are on the lazier side, the shy side, or elderly cats, those cats especially can benefit from regular play and it may take them a little longer to get to the stage of enjoying it and really interacting and engaging with you in play, but the benefits are definitely worth the patience and the consistency I hope this video was helpful and you have some great playtime with your cat and I'll see you in the next video.